Hi, this is Mr. McGovern, and the third video in the uh, Beats and Standing Wave series. So in the last video, um, it was a video that I didn't make, but it was a really good one nonetheless about um, wave superposition, how you can add waves and subtract waves. So here's just to go over that again, I've got <coughs> what looks like three waves here, but really there's a green wave uh, go to the right, and a blue wave going to the left. And the red wave is the sum of those two waves. It's those two waves added together. So if you look very carefully, you can see the green moves to the right, the blue moves to the left, but when you add them together, the red just looks like it's growing, um, but not actually moving. It's just standing in place, and that's the definition of a standing wave. So the different types of um, positions in standing waves, uh, if you look very carefully of the red one, you see bits where it goes very positive and very negative. Those are called antinodes. They have the maximum displacement. And then there's areas of the red um, wave that don't move at all, and those are called the nodes. You need to be able to, uh, be able to pick them out and, um, and name them. So why do they occur? So let's think about strings for a second. If I had a string tied to a wall, so it has a fixed end, and I, and I shake it and make a, a, a pulse here, a wave here, when it gets to that end and it reflects, it changes phase. And what that means is, if I was to do multiple of these ones, the incident waves, that means the waves going to the right, and the reflected waves, which are now changed phase, can interfere with each other and that can cause a standing wave. And so this is a, um, a situation here where you have two fixed ends and a standing wave. Um, and what you'll notice about this is with strings that have fixed ends, at the ends you always have nodes. You have nodes where they are areas of the wave where there's no displacement, and we have those because the ends are fixed. Okay? They can't displace, uh, they can't move here, and they can't move here. So these are forced to be nodes. And by forcing these to be nodes, it, it forces us into certain um, standing waves throughout the string. So here's what they are. You can have different frequencies of the standing waves um, and it causes different wavelengths but they've all got the same shape and that is that they have nodes at the end. So you have to be able to um, go through and draw each one of these if you need to. So the first one, they call it the, fu the um, fundamental or first harmonic, has a node at each end and it's only half a wave. Um, and so what I do, instead of writing it as lambda equals 2L, I write L equals half a wave because there's half a wave there. So it's exactly um, algebraically identical how they've written it here, but I really like writing it as either half a wave or um, lambda over two. The next one has a full wave. It's one full wave, and so I write it down as lambda equals L, or L equals lambda. The next one has one and a half waves, so I write L equals 1.5. And you get the picture down and down and down. So again, these um, way that the, the, the pictures drawn it is algebraically identical, but I like my one. It just seems to make more sense. I just count how many waves I've drawn. So as an example of what you need to do in an exam, it's pretty simple questions. Um, here's a guitar, and they've asked us to draw the fourth harmonic, or third overtone. So fourth harmonic is this one down here. Um, and I draw myself one, two, four waves, and then draw the opposite sides of them so it shows it's a standing wave. I like to do my opposite sides as a dash, and then regardless of what they've said, I'll always write how many waves there are. So L equals, there's two full waves there. That's going to help me with my calculation. And the next question says, the speed of the waves, 289, calculate the wavelength and the frequency of this harmonic. So first up, I've got L equals 2 um, lambda. I can just rearrange that because I know the length of the string they gave me in the opening question was 0 0.736. So 0 0.736 is equal to two waves. Rearrange all the wavelength and I get 0.368. Uh, and then I can just put that into the wave equation. They've given me the speed, and I've now got the wavelength, and so I can work out the frequency. So that'd be an easy merit question for me.